First, it is a city reduced to ruins in one of the longest battles of the Ukraine war. Yet the fight for Bakhmut still goes on. Today, Kyiv said its troops were holding out, even as Russian forces came close to encircling the city. However, also today, a top US official said that even if Bakhmut were to fall to Russian forces, it would not necessarily give Moscow momentum in the war. Take a listen. There is some very defensible terrain in that area. I think Bakhmut, uh, I certainly don't want to uh, discount the tremendous work that the Ukrainian uh, soldiers and leaders have put into defending Bakhmut. But I, I think it's more of a symbolic uh, value than it is uh, strategic and operational value. So the fall of Bakhmut won't necessarily mean that, uh, that uh, the Russians are have changed the tide of uh, the tide of this fight. Well, let's get some analysis then on what uh, Lloyd Austin had to say with Douglas Herbert, our foreign affairs commentator. And Doug, Russia and Ukraine have thrown so much at Bakhmut, haven't they? So, what do you make of Lloyd Austin saying, in effect? Actually, perhaps it's not that important. What he's essentially saying, without saying it, is, is that this is the most senseless battle, and I'm speaking of the Russian side of this equation, the most senseless battle in the annals of modern warfare, in the sense that this has been a nine-month grinding attritional war in which we have seen Russia, and Lloyd Austin mentioned this, uh, throwing wave after wave of mostly ill-trained, uh, inexperienced, young recruits into the line of heavy enemy fire. Basically, uh, on Putin's behalf, uh, nary a care for the human toll, for the lives of uh, Russian troops here, even if the Kremlin will vehemently, staunchly deny that. So we have seen an essentially senseless battle, which, as Lloyd Austin has said, has had really only strategic value. Uh, look, he's only pointing out what military experts and others, e including the Institute for the Study of War, which has tracked this battle, day, th this conflict, day after day after day. Basically, Basically says that even, regardless, even if Bakhmut were to fall, the Ukrainian defensive positions in the area are such that the Russians are unlikely to be able to mount any sort of significant uh, offensive uh, in the days and weeks uh, ensuing uh, the fall, uh, potential fall of Bakhmut. Uh, what you have is Russian forces in a desperate situation. They have uh, endemic lack of manpower. That is, they do not have enough uh, fighting forces. Uh, Putin is held off on another official announcement of a mobilization, although many people believe there are a lot of forms of secret mobilization underway. Uh, we've seen the, the going into prisons to get convicts, the Chechen recruits, um, all sorts of other inexperienced conscripts being sent to the front, front, but no official mobilization, and they're lacking manpower. Yes, Russia's been desperately trying to, uh, lacking ammunition. They've been desperately trying to strike deals, as we know, with Iran, which Iran denies, with North Korea, going anywhere where they might be able to get the munitions they need. But the fact of the matter remains, Russia will remain in a, in a vulnerable position. This is an echo of the same thing we saw, where Ukraine was fighting a strategic withdrawal, if you will, withdrawing quick, uh, very, very incrementally in order to exert maximum losses on the Russian troops. And that will leave the Russians essentially, and this is not according to me, but according to anyone who's been military observers, who've been including Russian military bloggers, watching this, this, this war unfold, will leave Russia unable, uh, following Bakhmut, to mount any sort of, of significant new offensive in the days and months following the fall of Bakhmut. This is clearly a made-for-Russian propaganda war to shore up public opinion about, quote, the special military operation, which, again, quote, according to Putin, is going according to plan. Nonetheless, though, if it's not that important, Ukraine is still holding on there. Uh, more than holding on. Zelensky met with his top generals today. Uh, they basically uh, have gotten no order. Commanders in the field say they have no order to retreat. On the contrary, they are determined right now to fight to the last, to shore up their defensive positions, to hold their defensive lines right now. They, um, they do know. The Russians are, uh, according to the military reports, um, partially encircling these Ukrainian in troops. But the Ukrainians still continue to dig in. They continue to get the weapons. Uh, there's been no knockout blow. In, in, in fact, over this past weekend, the Ukrainians sh showed that they could give as good as they get, even though they're outmanned and, and overpowered in a munition standpoint by the Russians. Uh, their assault brigades, the Ukrainians, went on the attack this weekend and actually reportedly repelled Russian forces. So even after the six to nine months of grueling attritional warfare, intense 
round-the-clock shelling by Russian forces. The Ukrainians continue to dig in there. Hence, Zelensky's sort of hailing and extolling of what he sees as his forces, extraordinary courage and valor in conditions that are nothing less than utter hell. Well, meanwhile, it is the Wagner mercenary group that is leading that fight uh, for Bakhmut by yeah. the Russians. And its leader, Yevgeny Prigozhin, uh, has suggested that Wagner could actually retreat from around Bakhmut. Let's take a listen to that. If the Wagner group retreats, this is what history will remember. The front will crumble. It will disintegrate up to the Russian border and maybe even beyond. If we back down now, we will go down in history forever as the people who took the main step in losing the war. And Doug, look, what do you make of Prigozhin's comments? This is the leader of one of the most brutal private mercenary groups that we have seen, and he's essentially in an existential battle with uh, Vladimir Putin. Now, obviously, the Russian state media perhaps isn't presenting it as such, but the Russian military command, the official Russian military under uh, the defense minister Sergei Shoigu, uh, the, 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 the chief of the Ukrainian war, Valery Gerasimov, have essentially shut out Prigozhin's people. Pr uh, 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 Prigozhin himself says that his own aid, his military aid, showed up at the military headquarters quarters to ask for ma more ammunition, and he was essentially barred access, denied access. This shows the state of play right now. Putin more and more sees Prigozhin as a mini-Putin, someone who potentially and is using the same type of language and rhetoric as Putin. Uh, and this heightened visibility is giving him a lot of power, even, but he desperately needs the munitions right now. Putin sees him as a rival, and what this shows, or suggests at least, is that the Russian defense ministry, official Russian military officials, are right now prioritizing, in a sense, as some have pointed out, the power struggle against of Yevgeny Prigozhin over achieving Russia's war aims. That's what it's come to right now. This is a real showdown, no matter what the official propaganda says, between Prigozhin and the center, Putin and his defense ministry. All right. Thanks for your analysis very much indeed. Douglas Herbert for us there.